Right, today's video is on housing targets, the, one of the grade 11 set poems for 2018. Um, so this is obviously a scene poem, you will study for your exams and your tests. However, picture yourself now, it's an unseen poem, it's the first time you're seeing this poem. Um, and one of the best things to do is look at the title, even before you look at the poem. So let's have a look at the title. The title is housing targets. Um, so obviously the two words, you look at the word housing, you think of the connotations of that word, or does that word make you think of homes, a place where you stay, your abode, and targets, I don't know, perhaps you're thinking of a bullseye, um, perhaps you're thinking of the American chain shop, um, or you're thinking of the idea of hitting something, hitting your goal. Okay, Put those two together and we start thinking about goals for housing, goals for housing for people. Now, if you refer to your textbook, you'll see that the poet is a South African author, um, writer and poet. And so if you are aware of the housing situation, so I think if you've been listening to any of the news or if perhaps you've spoken to your parents about um, housing in South Africa, you might be starting to get a better idea of perhaps what this poem is all about. Let's have a look at some of the news articles that come up when you search housing in South Africa, particularly RDP housing, which is the government um, promised housing policy. Okay, so what happened in South Africa is uh, at the end of apartheid, uh, one of the promises made to the people of South Africa was that those people who were previously disadvantaged, who'd lived their entire lives and generations before them had lived in poverty and in um, low cost housing or in um, informal settlements, houses they'd built themselves, very inadequate housing, were promised that the government would give them housing. Unfortunately for the vast majority of those people, as you can see in some of these headlines now, um, they didn't. They either didn't get those that those houses, or they had to wait an incredibly long time for those houses. You can have a look at some of the quotes here. Twenty years have passed, where the homes we've been promised, it's been more than a year, nothing has happened. Um, here, families were moved out of a township nine years ago, and they're still waiting for their houses. Um, and if you delve a little bit deeper into the topic, you'll see that um, some of the blame falls with corruption, bribery, people taking money to build these houses but not building them, or building inadequate houses by cutting costs. So it's quite a, a topical um, uh, topical topic. Excuse the redundancy there. But um, yeah, it's, it's something that a lot of South Africans obviously is really important to them. And if you think about your home, what it means to you, perhaps you'd like a, a better one, perhaps you know people who don't have ideal housing. Um, so bear all that in mind when you read the poem. So what I want you to do now is I want you to pause this video, go to page 119 of your textbook, um, which has got the author's, uh, a brief introduction, the author's details and then on pages 120 and 121 you're going to read the poem. Once you've read the poem for yourself you can continue with this video. Okay hopefully you've now read the poem perhaps with that introduction in mind you have engaged with the contents in a little bit more of a meaningful way and now we're going to have a look at each of the, the sections of the poem. You might have noticed that there are 11 stanzas and that there doesn't seem to be any specific uh, format or rhyme scheme that we can pick up on. So in other words, yeah, those of you who more switched on will say, yes, the poem is written in free verse. Okay, it's first two lines. Somewhere in our past, we believed in the future that a better world would discover foundation under feet and we would forever be singing in its kitchen. Now you'll see on this on your screen that the word somewhere um, is highlighted. And somewhere, um, it's not a very specific uh, description, is it? There's no specific place. Um, and so that highlights the lack of uncertainty. Our speaker is speaking on behalf of the people who are in the situation where they were promised housing and are waiting. And you'll see that with the use of the we. Okay, so he's speaking in behalf of all these people. Somewhere in our past, we believed in the future. 
okay and then the reference to the better world maybe that sounds a little bit cliched but if you're thinking about election promises well exactly that's what a lot of the things that the politicians build their their um their campaign promises are is this cliche that we will give you a better world okay obviously the reference there to foundations is very specific because if you look at the the visual here on your left hand side this is the foundations of a house and that's the first thing that needs to be built but obviously the foundation there can have a double meaning in other words a feeling of being grounded and having something on which you've built your life okay and then this beautiful uh, description here we would forever be singing in its kitchen think about the connotations of singing singing in your kitchen i think of ideas of being free south africans specifically sing um, when we are feeling strong emotions here you definitely get the feeling of joy so you can imagine these people dreaming of a better world where they would be supplied with housing um, and they have a place where they feel settled they would have roots and they'd be able um, to continue with their future in that way the sense of uncertainty that started with the somewhere somewhere in the future we don't have a specific date is is further emphasized in this third stanza where we've got this image of bricks piling up in a field whether there will be enough, no one knows how they fit together and it is anybody's guess. Okay, nobody knows, no one, anybody. There's no specific people there. There's no reference to um, a foreman or the people haven't been given plans to their houses. They don't know how big they'll be. And so you've just got this pile of bricks, which obviously is the potential for a house, represents the beginning of the process. However, we don't get a sense that anything is actually happening at this point. And that is further um, reiterated in the second three, set of three lines on this page, which is that um, you've got these men sitting, waiting for their instructions. So we imagine these men would be the builders. Um, and you've got that lovely personification of the weather scribbling on their dark and darkening skins. This idea that they're sitting outside day in and day out in the sun um, getting getting uh, lines and and um, the effects of sun on their skin um, but they're waiting okay so just as the people are waiting for their houses so these men are waiting for their instructions and as i mentioned a little bit earlier there's no but see it doesn't seem to be anybody giving them these instructions However, in the next few stanzas, we do get a hint that somebody in authority is hanging about. Um, however, does that give the, the people waiting for their houses and the men waiting for instructions any joy? Well, let's have a look. Okay. So, from time to time, limousines miraculously appear, as if from nowhere. And there's always a somebody. Again, not a specific person. A somebody in a suit willing to smile and shake their hands and in most cases the connotation of a politician visiting their people they swoop in they smile they shake hands they kiss babies and in this case the person lays the first stone you can imagine how this should in essence represent the beginning of uh, the process for these people to get their houses okay Obviously, the somebody comes from a place where they have a house to go to at night. They have a bed to sleep in. They have a kitchen in which to sing. They're driving limousines. They're wearing suits. Okay. But why are they there? Well, the camera lights are taking pictures of them laying the stone. And so instead of this being a meaningful breaking ground and a meaningful start to the um, process of building these houses it seems to be little more than a publicity stunt and the camera lights and the racing engines turn around shrink back from where they came yeah. interesting use of the word they miraculously appear as if from nowhere and then they shrink back from wherever they came nothing specific here either again the sense of uncertainty the lack of information that the people are getting um, from their leaders, from the companies given the task to build these houses. So you've got this sense of hopelessness, this despair as 
perhaps you've got this seeming miracle about to happen and yet now these the signs of hope which is this person in a suit um, they they turn around and they go back from where they came and then the last few stands of the poem is the speaker now dealing with the sense of um, again abandonment and um, and hopelessness because the system and the question I posed here is how does the stanza develop our understanding of the system the system has left them staring at their own hands puzzled at precisely what has been transacted why are they still being offered bonds if they don't have anything um, tangible in front of them they only have promises okay and I, when I read this I always imagine um, an old an old woman's hands or an old man's hands uh, because on the next in the next stanza you'll see they squint between gnarled fingers okay and for me the gnarled makes me think of old crooked um, which only emphasizes the, the 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 length of time that these people have been waiting for their houses to be delivered okay so we've got the puzzlement um, you know they've been the man has sh uh, sh shaken everybody's hand and yet they're left empty-handed okay so these empty gnarled hands just represent the lack the absence of what has been transacted they're not sure and if you think about people who are in the position to not afford their own housing and are at the mercy of the government to give them housing they are not going to be people who understand how bonds work and how finance works and they really are at the mercy of the people who have promised to give them what they need okay now the last um, sort of six or seven lines are left with the the image of these people in the empty fields or um, in these barren lots where somebody's laid a stone and they're imagining where their house will go they pace out the hopeful distances there will be a flower bowl my bed is going here okay and you've got the sense of hope with will be is going these are certainties in the in the mind of the speaker um, they're really imagining what their house is going to look like um, but it's the future tense it hasn't happened yet okay um, and so what is the reality well as for now okay will be is going to be future now is the present as for now the doorknobs have no doors and their windows peer out at no sky now the comment here is these are incongruous images because usually we'll say um, the doors have no doorknobs um, the this, there's no windows to look out but there are windows but no sky beyond the windows there are doorknobs but they have no doors maybe this is sort of highlighting the absurdity of the situation and that these promises have been given these people are waiting but there's nothing there in reality for them yet um, perhaps you know highlighting that the situation is probably not going to get any better for them in any time any time soon um, and the no scar no doors the negative no perhaps highlighting the sense of futility of these people's experience and if you bring that back to South African context you'll see how the speakers perhaps really um, poignantly captured this the feelings of the nation of these many thousands of people who are waiting looking at their empty hands pacing out the hopeful distances listening to the promises by the men who come in suits um, but then drive away again 